Okay, well, back here for a town hall, and just the uh, reason why you're coming up, you came back up here to Prescott. I always come here. This this has been home, and it's uh, seeing all the people, the, 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 the good turnout, the great questions, people who are well thought, uh, wanting to be a part of the solution um, instead of being part of the problem. Uh, that's magic to my ears anytime. Right, and again, there were some concerns about the Fast and Furious, and again, give us an update on where that's going here. Well, Fast and Furious, what we're doing is we're still demanding all the uh, documents um, to, to know, first of all, who authorized this, who's going to take responsibility, that we don't do it again, and that we make sure that um, uh, those that have allowed this to occur um, are held to the, the highest degree of the law, accountability like everybody else. Um, coming up in February, beginning of February, we have um, Mr. Holder coming in front of the government oversight. Um, we were going to have a joint meeting with Mr. Holder. Um, that just got, that was canceled, um, our parts, the judiciary part held that. Um, so we're going to get our opportunity to ask those questions of Mr. Holder. Right. And again, there was another concern about redistricting. And kind of explain, uh, clarify where Paul Gorsuch is going to be with this new redistricting. Well, we've watched the, we've looked at the, di the, the, the districts, the two districts that uh, we, you know, our district got cut into. Um, we're seeing what my, um, you know, what I bring to the table as far as the assets and, and the things that I've been able to accomplish and try to look at which one um, I think will make a bigger difference um, should they want to have me uh, um, represent them. You know, I was humbled to, to represent, I think, the greatest district in the, in the country. i um, love to have it again. See Miss Jan. Um, but um, uh, that's not the case. Um, so what we got to do is figure out which one you want to do that and how we can best facilitate uh, those citizens and the citizens of Arizona as our resources. Um, it sounds like you haven't made a firm decision yet, is that correct, about which district you would serve, the one with Flagstaff in it or the one with Prescott in it? Um, we've made a decision, but we are deciding when we want to say it. Okay. And um, Sheriff Paul Babu just um, announced that he would be running in this district um, since they managed to stick Pinal County in there. Um, how do you feel if, if you should end up running against him? Are, are you concerned about that? Well, I'm disappointed because I've had conversations with uh, Sheriff Ebu. Um We were hoping that we would see two rural districts have two strong candidates coming out of it. Um, unfortunately, we haven't seen that yet. Um, but like I said, the map hasn't, has not been finished, um, particularly with at least my thought, um, uh, with the intervention of, of the courts. Um, but that's a possibility. Um, uh, that doesn't have anything to do with what I'm, I'm going to do and what I feel uh, my my values and my uh, skill set uh, would balance. If, if it's coming to Yavapai, that's he's going to have to take me on just like I'd have to take him on. If it's not, well, hey, then it, it was not a, not such a big deal. Um, but I think um, you know when you look at the whole scenario of where we are, um, uh, <clears throat> I was lucky enough to have a strong base as a, and a base for me being Yavapai County. His base is, is Pinal County or Casa Grande. Uh, his benefits and his uh, work ethic and his base uh, as, a, as a sheriff, as a military officer, has a better skill set formulated um, to work with that, that area that's going to grow and, and benefit. I, I find it, I find it um, that somewhat perplexing that we're not thinking outside the box and looking at what's best for Arizona um, or um, what's good for uh, the populations that, that we would be serving. Yavapai has some very good um, differences uh, than Pinal County as far as economies, as far as infrastructure, as far as um, the way people interact in their, um, uh, their protocols. Um, I, I think we ought to have been looking at the populations that we could have served extremely well. Time's not up yet. If you choose to represent or at least run for election in um, CD District 4, mm -hmm. which would be the one at the Alpine County in Prescott, will you be relocating to live in this area? Um, we've had a nice conversation, my wife and I, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. So um, do you have any time frame as to when you'll be making a decision? Um, or very an shortly. announcement? Very shortly. Very shortly. Within a week. Within a week. Yep. Okay. Okay, um, I want to backtrack a little bit. I was reading recently that um, you were the only member of Arizona's House delegation to support a measure to avert the government shutdown. And I know that there's been some concern about that. Why did you make that vote? And um, why were you the only one from Arizona? Well, like I said before, no is not an answer. Um, then I, I did go to all the meetings and talking to all the very uh, uh, folks. Shutting down the government did, any, did nobody any good. 
And you have to realize we're one half or one third of the federal government. Um, when I was elected, um, we were talking about spending, increasing spending, not spending cuts, but increasing spending. And what we've got to do is we've got to retool and reteach people that you can spend less, you've got to live within your means, and that we can get that done. Um, when you're one half or one third of the federal government, um, and you don't have the bully pulpit of the president, you're going to have to make some kind of, of compromise, particularly when you have in light that you're not going to shut down the government. Um, that's, that's my objective, is was to, to, to start winning this game four and six yards at a time. One of the things that we have to realize, we're not going to get back to square one and balance a budget overnight. It's not going to happen. American people have lost that, that opportunity. And what we have to do is reteach and make sure that everybody has skin in the game so that they understand what it means and that, it, that we all have to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And then um, in August, you were the only House Republican to support raising the From Arizona? Governments. Yes, from Arizona to support raising the debt ceiling. And that's, that's the whole same thing, is, is that going through um, the, the freshman class was very uh, elaborate in, in trying to find out a whole discussion of the facts of the discussion. Um, shutting down the government wasn't an option. Everybody, you know, when we went to Standard and Poor's and Moody's discussion, we brought them in to discuss it. Um, their conversation wasn't about if you're going to raise the debt ceiling, you're going to raise the debt ceiling. It's, it's inherently to our Constitution and to the, the way our founding fathers looked at guaranteeing our debt. Um, what they wanted to see and why we were downgraded is to see the, the, the way we were going to streamline how we get out of debt. That was the most important thing for them. Um, and that's, that's what fell by the wayside, is that we got to have more people involved in how do we get that streamlined, how do we uh, take away the encumbrances that future generations will have, and we have to take ownership of it. We just have to have all have skin in the game. Okay, one last thing. You've got to tell us about pulling a tooth on the floor of the house. Oh, I'd happily tell you about that one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Exactly. So um, it's, it's a debt ceiling discussion. It's Sunday morning, and I'm sitting watching the discussion. I'm sitting in one of the back rows. And my, and my colleague and, and good friend, uh, uh, Martha Roby from Alabama, comes up to me and she goes, you want to go to work? And I go, I am at work. And uh, she said, no, 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 it's your real job. I go, dentistry, is somebody in trouble? She goes, oh, yeah, it's my daughter. So I got a chance to go back into the cloakroom on off the house floor that we all get something to eat or something mm -hmm. where we can talk and stuff. And her daughter's there. And she's got a primary tooth that's bound and causing her a lot of problems. She's got some big tears in her eyes. So I got a chance to talk to her. I went and bought a, a, a Snickers bar and threw it in the freezer. And I proceeded to talk with her. And one of the things that I looked at and I saved and, and talked to her is it was bound and I had to get it unbound. And so there's something about chocolate that works great, especially mean? caramel chocolate. What do you mean by bound and unbound? Uh, well, it's, it, it, it was two teeth were erupting and it hadn't uh, lost part of its root, so okay. um, the ligament hadn't let go and it wasn't real loose, mm -hmm. okay? So um, I talked to her and I put some ice taking the use of ice and using it as an anesthetic right mm -hmm. on the gum tissue. I told her, listen, when we had this, this Snickers bar come out, you love Snickers bar, right? And she goes, yeah. I said, when you bite, you're gonna bite, count to 15, and I'm gonna say, open really quick, and you gotta do it really, really quickly. Well, that caramel gets kind of like molasses, thick molasses, and, and it kind of wrapped around it. She bit down into it, and she loosened it. And you could tell that it relieved the pressure, but we had to get it out. So I tried to get her to get it out. She wanted me to, so I had a, a glove on. At that point in time, I grabbed on the glove. I said, look, there's a speaker. She turned, and I had the tooth out. <laughs> we gave it to her in a plastic bag. She had a cotton roll that she ran around the floor, on the house floor, showing everybody. She then showed the, the speaker. The speaker took a dollar bill. He gave it to her, and he said, listen, what I need to do is I need to believe again. I need you to put that tooth underneath your pillow, and I need to see that the tooth fairy comes even to Washington, D.C., because I need to believe. It's magical. Later that week, when they were going home, this taxi was taken off, and I saw these two pe two young ladies, Martha and her daughter, yelling outside the taxi, Dr. Gosar, thank you. And that's, you know, it, it was all smiles. And by the way, both Democrats and Republicans were in the cloakroom watching us take that two thousand. Know. <laughs> so, gee, if you could just give some Snickers bars. <laughs> <laughs> your uh, constituents. Yeah. Some dentists don't recommend Snickers bars. Yeah, <laughs> but it was a good way, you know, the, you know, take your eye off the prize and not think about the, you know, the sudden little jerk. So good. it worked so, out pretty fun. Excellent. Okay, so yeah. there we go. Thank Sorry, you guys. No, right. we did Thank one you. more question. That's, okay. but that's, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs>